Hello everyone. Uh, what I'm creating here is a shader using ShaderGraph, and it's going to be an update to the hair shader that I've created for the Unity Asset Store. So I've created hair shader one and hair shader two, and I guess you could call this hair shader three, where it actually uses the shader graph. Now, hair shader one was initially made using Shader Forge, which is now deprecated. Then I have rewrote it in Amplify Shader because I really like node based shaders. And lo and behold, I'm using uh, the shader, um, gosh, I've got shader graph uh, for Hair Shader 3. But I'm going to make Hair Shader 3 an extension of Hair Shader 1 and 2. It's going to be an update to each of those packages at no extra cost, but uh, on its own it will cost because uh, on its own I'll give it updates otherwise you're just going to get the the initial draft version uh, added to hair shader 2 and 1 I may do updates uh, semi periodically so that it's not too much work to like package everything each time but I will work on a HD render pipeline version now so uh, I think in the previous video I was showing you how to set up uh, the anisotropic materials using the HD render pipeline and trying to make some kind of hair shader uh, with what was available but there's just not enough happening there so I've decided to go back to the groundworks and create uh, a different masking system for this new uh, HD render pipeline shader. Now what we've got here is a red green blue alpha channel mask system RGBA so the red channel is going to be your color variation where there's black there's going to be one color and where there's white there's going to be another color uh, then the green channel is going to be the root so if you imagine this is the root part of the hair if this is a hair plane then this would be the root of the, the hair and it goes down to the, the edge to the tip so there's going to be some root color and there's also going to be some tip color and all of those are going to be customizable in this shader. So, yeah, so if you want to watch through this video, you'll get to see how I create this. Uh, okay, so first off, I've created some color nodes and the main texture uh, variable. So I've just been adding, you know, you can add like textures and your floats and things like that and your colors in here. So you add these parameters first, then you sort of drag them in and connect them up. So I've got this property for the VRTC which is a variation uh, the root, the tip and the cutoff VRTC hair shader so this is just a new system that I've created and it's going to be what I'm going to use moving forward VRTC for hair uh, there might be an, another anisotropic type thing but that doesn't matter too much because the shader drives that itself so I've changed the shader graph here to opaque, alpha cut off, double sided is disabled but I'm going to enable that now and anisotropy is enabled, receive decals, receive SSR and specular AA. These I don't really care about, I'm just going to leave them as they are and see if I get any better results later once I've got the, the nodes connected. So initially I've made two colours a light color and a kind of darkish color for the tone variation and those get basically, basically lerped together where there's white it's going to choose this first, first color here and where there's black it's going to choose this second color here so it's just a way of mixing the two colors and it takes the red channel from here which is that which I was talking about so it's just grayscale black and white lines for variation for each strand of hair Okay, so that's our variation. And now I'm going to do another lerp, I think. So I'll just create a node. Right. Uh, I want to add the, the root to it. So I'll do the input main. Uh, the result is going to be, so the root, let's do the root, would be a kind of darkish tone here. 
by default. Okay, I can just drag that in like that. So the root is going to be there. And the amount is controlled by the alpha. Now to get the alpha, I need to open this up to see all the, the nodes of it. Um, and I think what I do is create a node and do break maybe, or component um, split. Okay. So split will take this, and now I get access to each of these. Um, let's see, do I really need that? I need the I need the the amount. Okay, yeah, because it's in the alpha. It's done by the the alpha slider. So the amount will be this multiplied. So I'll multiply that by the green of the mask. So that multiplied by that is now. I wish there was a way to minimize it. Oh, there we go. I can minimize it there. Uh, that's going to be what drives that color in. So if I change the alpha default to like 128, halfway, you can see it's already brought some of that dark tone, that dark tone in. If I move this here, there you go, you can see it in real time. So it's bringing some dark tone in, and that's quite handy. Uh, so that's the amount multiplied by the mask, so you can control it through the initial texture. So if we want a bit more of that, I can go here and um, maybe just stretch this a bit further. And then I like to do some motion blur on it, just to get a faint edge. And then probably like level adjust it, just to get that. Okay, so if I save that now, go back in, that should update, there we go. So there's a bit more rootage there. We can change the color of that as well. So you can get some nice, funky, uh, unique looking stuff. So that will be our root. Now the tip color is a similar thing. Let me just tidy this up a bit. Don't need to see that anymore. Let's uh -huh. split for that. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to keep that open. Tip color amount. Okay, the tip color is a similar thing. I'm going to do, it's going to copy this multiply node. So, variation root tip. So, the tip is going to be multiplied by the color, uh, the, the alpha amount in here, but I need the split. I'm going to split it so I can get access to the alpha. Multiply those together. So it's basically if it's nothing, zero times whatever values in here is nothing's going to get lurked in. And then as I increase this, it's going to lurk in the 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 blue channel in here for the tip. And you would do something similar for UV based hair, where you've got like the hairs going everywhere in the map. But this is just top to bottom. If you want to do your hair planes, you just put them all in here vertically, and then you can manipulate them in 3D after that. After that, so that's another decent method, but uh, depends on the result you want. It can get a bit complicated. Okay, so multiply these into a lerp node. That will go into there, and the main color is going to be the result of. this so we got our main color our main base tones coming from two colors that gets lurked in and then adds in the root and then adds in the tip so the tip color is going to be where's the tip color tip color amount is here like that okay I don't know if that's hard to read or not but basically the tip color that I give it here tip color let's give it red 
and let's just see what the result is. Where's the result thing? There, okay. And as I increase the amount, that gradually comes in there. It'll be a red colour. Let's also change how that looks. So I'm gonna just take a bunch here. I'll just something like that. Motion blur. Level adjust. Uh, contrast again. Like level adjust it so I can kill some of the darks. And then do a motion blur in it again a couple of times. Okay, that's cool. It should, there we go, it's a bit better. Right, so we've got a nice red tip. Let's go for uh, like a yellow tip. Something like that. Right, so that's going to be the hair colour. So I can add that into the base. Now things like anisotropy want control of that, so I'm going to add uh, vector one. I call it anisotropy. Aniso T R O P Y. Exposed, and I'm going to change it to a slider and give it zero to one. And I just need to drag it in here and then connect it up to anisotropy. Uh, we've got a normal map, we should create a normal map. So add texture 2D and call this a normal map. Change that to bump. And I think that's all you have to do for normal maps. Oh, I also should make a create an order texture. Normal from text, um, sample 2D. That goes in there. Type, I guess, would be normal and then tangent base. Okay, so that's how to set up your normal map. Plug it into tangent space normal map. The other ones I'm not too worried about because I've not used them before. I kind of know what they do. Bent normal is uh, the AO is in the blue channel and that helps to give things a bit more emphasis but it's not quite standard practice just yet um, tangent tangent based three i've never really used this it maybe corresponds to the anisotropic and i might just put like a a color in there and then when you move the color it might bend something okay so let's try that i'll just save the asset um what have i called this I've called it test so far. Okay, that's fine. So now I'm going to go to create a material. I'll call it Aniso test. I'll call it SG for share a graph. And just look for test. Wherever it is. Mm. <laughs> Shader graphs test, okay. And pop that on this one. This one's a bit different. So I'll have a look at that in a second. You see it's very shiny. Is it tropy? Not doing anything yet. Normal map. Also need some tiling in there. Root color. Okay, so all, all these things seem to be working the way they should but I need other things like smoothness. So I'll add a float, and I'll call it smoothness. Uh, I also like to change these to sliders, they're easy to use. Pop it in there, smoothness. I'm pretty sure you can like reorder these. You think you just collapse them and then Hopefully just shuffle them around. Let's try smoothness can go what, there. Normal map can go here. Alright. It should be it. So when I save it it will reorder. Okay, 
and now I can play with the smoothness amount. I need to be able to tile the textures, so I got the UVs here. So let's create a node. I don't know, is it, is it tiling and offset? There we go. Tiling and offset. Okay. Got a vector two here, so I'm going to add um, vector two tiling x slash y. Let's do uh, one by one for now. And then plop that there. Offset, we don't really need. So I'll just leave that. And now that can go into there. And like before, I might want a separate one here. So I'm going to call this, uh, call this the color tiling. Or mask, maybe the mask tiling x, y, and then I'll do a normal one. So add vector to normal tiling x, y. Drag that here. Uh, defaults one and one again. Okay, I don't know if it's as straightforward as that. Oh, I need to do a tiling and offset. Yep, that goes there, then that goes there. Otherwise, it just doesn't function right, usually. Okay, save that. Guess, I wonder if get the option to show the yeah no option to show the default um, offset so I'll need to move these I'll just move them up to the texture not quite as conventional this way but now in a do some X tiling on it, I can get the, the separate banding between the normal and whatnot. Right, uh, the cutoff threshold, I need 0.5. Also need to multiply that by the the alpha. So we've got the, we've got the value here, but I need to multiply. So I'll get that multiply that with the alpha. Okay, and save that. Should get something here. Mm -hmm. Just check the texture itself. Okay, make sure you've checked alpha is transparent. Apply. Huh. Pretty sure we got yeah, we got that there. Alpha cut off. Oh okay, that's that's weird. It's not what I expected. It's like it's the opposite. white should be seen and black should be clipped normally um, okay so for, for some reason it's the opposite effect uh, and I want that to be a slider so to fix that I'm going to change it to a slider save us it and I'm also going to do a one minus 
to invert it. And you know, it's kind of unusual, but it is what it is. So black basically keeps and white loses, I guess. Now that I flip that, I should be able to change. Okay, this is confusing. Hmm. Got the alpha. Now got the clip threshold. Got the da 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 da. Zero to one. And then I'm doing one minus to invert it. But that's not doing anything now. So the alpha, oh, do you know what? I need to actually put the alpha in the, I probably need to do that, then that, I guess. And I might not even need this one minus now. Okay, that, that might be it. That's what happens when you come from amplify shader to shader graph. There we go. Okay, wasn't too difficult. So we got our cut off value. God, it's working a bit too kind of perfectly. Uh, let's add that there then. It's a bit too clippy. Too clippy. Oh, come on. <laughs> right, so basically that multiplied by that should go into the threshold. Then that would go straight to there. Is that what I had? I'm confused. So it knows what the alpha is. Threshold. Oh man, this is bollock. It should be this. It should be this straightforward. Maybe just put that there and forget about the multiply. This is it's too much for two. Too much. Okay, there we go. God, I think I made that a bit too trivial. Don't know why, but I, yeah, it should have been that simple from the start. Okay. So the alpha directly into the alpha and then the clip deals with the cutoff point. I don't know why I was overcomplicating it, but there you go. Right, so we got those, we got a rip we got a tip colour amount, which we can kinda just see. Maybe it needs to be more, so I'm gonna go into blue channel and just extend that. As far into the sky as it can go before it goes a bit too bright at that point. And save that. So a variation root tip cut off. That's what our V R T C stands for. Okay, so far so good. Anisotropic wise, not looking to anisotropic just yet. Uh, sometimes you have to tile it a few times. And there we go, we can get to a point where it's looking more like here. Right, let me just move it away from these things. Okay, so now we can play with the normal map strength because that has definitely got a factor in here. So with normal map, what I like to do is do a lerp. So create a node, a lerp, and 
then let's see if there's actually a normal something. We've got normal blend, normal from height, normal from texture, normal normalize, normal blend, blends. That usually blends two normals together. Oh, there we go. We've got a default normal. Uh, but we want to be able to control it. That's why we need this. So if I just put in a vector three, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be something that is exposed. So we don't have to create it in here. We just create it here. Zero zero one. That's your basically a flat normal. Now we're going to A. As if to say. A is the base without any normal map. The normal map can go into here. And then we need to expose a control amount. So vector one. And I call it bump amount. Bump. Change that. Bump amount slider, drag that there, and there that goes here. So if it's zero, it's going to use the flat, and if it's one, it's going to use the bump. So there, that goes into the normal. Okay, all right. Hope you're following this. Lerps, lerps are great because you can go between one thing to another based on a zero to one value. So 0 0.5 would be a mix of both. And they're good because they don't they don't overload each other. It's like if you use add, you know, if you have one add one, that's going to equal two. And then you have to sort of clamp it out so it goes back to one. Whereas lerps are good, they just they stay within the values of the two inputs based on a mixer amount. Zero goes zero keeps it on the value going into A and one sends it to the value going to be anything in between is a mix. Hope that makes sense and in the case of normal maps it looks complicated but it's not you're just mixing flat with bump. Okay so save that and we should get a little change here. There we go because there's no power in that bump amount. So as soon as we add that we get the shine happening. There we've got control of the smoothness so we're getting the anisotropic look. Let me turn the outline off so we can see. That is pretty. Ugh. What is going on there at the edge? Gosh. Um, don't like that at all. That may be. Well, the cutoff is okay. That might actually be something to do with the filtering. Trilinear. Doesn't change it. Uh, repeat, change that to clamp. Oh, no. Uh, mirror. Sort of fixes it. Repeat is bad. Mirror once. Pair axis. No. Mirror is about the best. Generate MIPS, turn that off. Okay. Alright, turning off the MIP maps, fixed it, so let's change that back to the repeat, see if it affects anything. No. Alright, now cutoff isn't great because it's a really pixely edge, I guess. It's pic only pixely when you're far away, it starts to get noisy. So you want to use some kind of post process effect and now initially I used the Mad Goat AA for this kind of thing, where it does really good um, screen space anti-aliasing on this. But the only option we've really got is the post-process stack type of thing. And I don't know if I've got that installed. Post-process, yeah, it's installed there. Um, not too sure how to apply it. I thought I was doing it right here. Let me just add something. Post process layer. Interlacing. Oh, there we go. Ah, accidentally found it. 
Right, it's just a case of seeing what gives the best result. Subpixel quality high. Let's toggle it to see the difference. That's actually not too bad. Not too bad. Um, okay, so back to the shader. You can change the amount of tiling on each of these. Usually I like the normal map kind of high and the color map kind of low, I guess. You can see it's based on where this light source is and because it's used in the sky. Uh, let me add like a directional light. I've got one here, but I've turned the intensity right down. It's also quite quite decent. Let's change it to 3.14, which I think the default is. God knows why they chose Pi, but yeah. All right, so it's looking a bit better. Obviously when you tile it, it starts to get squeezed at one side. That's just the nature of tiling things until I work that out. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway, click on that and you can see, yeah, it's probably better to keep things to whole numbers. I think that's what I'm getting at. That way it kind of blends a bit nice. You can also check out your textures and go to uh, filter other offset and then just like offset it horizontally like so. Uh, I think 1024 would be halfway. And you can see this is the problem. The sort of difference between these two values. So you might want to um, uh, I'll blur it up a bit or something, so I can maybe just get the smudge here and kind of smudge that around. Oops. Set it maybe a bit higher. Uh, maybe the clone stamp. brush go a bit softer with it that's not too bad as it is actually Oops. you can see I missed a bit at the bottom there so I'll just do something like that and then offset it again do the same with the green channel yeah, I can see it there. Let's see. And blue channel. Offset. Doesn't matter too much if I don't offset it back the way because of the nature of this texture, it doesn't matter. And a little bit of smear. Okay, that's got worst. That's got the worst of it out of the way. I've saved that and come back in, and that's fixed up a bit of the tiling there. So there's an isotropic working, kind of as it did before, but I did have like a dual band effect happening in the hair shader too, at least. And the only way to get that is to know where the light position is. And I've tried putting in light in here, but I get nothing. So I, I don't really know, I've got inputs of lighting, ambient, big GI and reflection probe, so none of those I can really use. Um, scene, maybe I've got like an, I don't know, an object for camera, scene color. And yeah, I just, I don't know exactly what this, this represents, so 
still learning a few things with it but we've got the anisotropic here and I'm going to try one little experimental thing I'm going to add a, a colour and call this uh, tangent and I'll set the default to what I think the default should be is this I thought I'd named it tangent, didn't I name it tangent? Ah, oh, okay, I changed the wrong thing, but anyway, tangent. I might have broke it. And now that can go here. And let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, I broke it a little bit. That's okay. So if you change this you can see that you can kind of bend things a bit and this was a similar way to how I did hair shader one where I just got this extra color to help bend the normals some more so you could add like extra green to the tangent basis and it would kind of offset it a bit um, but you can see here it's not really doing very much so if I take that away what happens I guess that would be the default colour um, whatever that is that's what pure red so let's just change that default to red and save it and I'm just going to disconnect it oops that's here disconnect it and then save to see if it stays the same okay it stays the same so that's cool I know what it does it's like anything off red will upset so it's red green RGB so it's using the red channel to push the tangent a bit um, yeah there's other ways that I could have done that is just to add usually add green to the normal map um, like so tangent if I set this to just set it to black first and I think what I do is add green to this so I'll need a split need a split then I guess I'll need a combine if there is such a thing combine yep okay so split is going to give me access to each channel then I'll create a vector one and call it uh, push tangent I'll change it to a slider but I'll do minus one to one oh. minus one to one <laughs> push tangent now that can go as the green channel but I need to add them up um, so I'll do an add green from there with this and the other two channels I'll keep as they are so that's why I need this combine so this is now the new green take the original red and the original blue from the normal map and now put that in the normal and see what happens what's the time it's in case I see what happens um, I think I'm adding green so you see nothing's happened until I push the tangent and that's exactly what I want so it's more or less acting like the hair shader 1 here and you get this slight double banding of hair shader 2 so that's not too bad I've got the anti-aliasing sorting out the edge here it's not got the nice uh, alpha fade that I got from using amplify, sh amplify shader which is in hair shader 2 um, 
but this this should work. Let me try it on the resource hair. Uh, it's obviously going to use a different hair mask system here, but I, I can do something with it. Let's see. So, do a duplicate of that. Niso test SG1. Uh, so, this will be uh, here, example. Right. Put that one here. And now start to load in the textures. So, I'll need. Da, 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 da. Let's choose this one. I know the order's wrong, but that's what I need. And I need the normal one. I need to change these back to one because it's a one to one UV. Got. I don't need that tangent anymore. We're not using that, so I can get rid of tangent. Delete. I'll go into Photoshop and change this. I don't need the red in there anymore. Save that. Um, as here, example here, base. Um, I guess I'm going to use. No, I want this because it's got the variation. R and T. I'm just wondering how it's set up with the one I got with it. If I can find it. Especially the simple resource. There we go. So let's see. So red, that could be the variation. Yeah, variation. I guess that's like the alpha. This looks like the root, so yeah. When it comes to this one, tip if I invert that, what do I get? Okay, uh, so variation root and tip root. I'm not too worried about. In fact, I'll copy this and paste it there, and I'll just levels adjust it. Something like that. There's a variation amount. Okay, variation, root, tip, and we also need the alpha, which is in here. Okay, and I need to save it as a target. So that's now going to be example here, and that'll be variation root tip cut off. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're going to use for this one. Hmm, things have changed a little bit. Go. Right. Okay, so we got control of the same things. We got the bump mount somewhere here. Smoothness. Anisotropy. Push the tangent. Perfect. That's all working nice. It cut off threshold. And now we get our variation colors. So color one could be like dark red, color two maybe light pink, and the root color, I usually like that to be black, but yeah, and the tip color, let's go for white, and you can only see it for certain things, it's just the way this hair is set up, uh, it's not designed for this, I've just seen how easy it is to pull something uh, from an existing resource and change it up. But so far so good. Now scene settings and rotate to see how that looks all the way around. 
we don't have control of the the highlight colors like we did before either so that's not not ideal but it's okay because it would reflect the color of the light so if I change this to green and let's look at the side that that's pointing at yeah it's actually okay it's still reacting like the way hair would we've got the two-sided thing it's using cut off we've got a little bit of the anti-aliasing and until um, like Madgo supports HDRP I don't think it does uh, let me just do a quick check Madgo's really nice so if you use that as Madgo so I've got this one Let's see if it's got HD. Oh, it's a scriptable render pipeline ready. Very good. So let's get that. Import. I hope there's not too many things to do to get it working. I don't know if I can be bothered. There we go. We've got the support here, which is good news. It's only a matter of time before a lot of these uh, assets and shaders update. Easy to set up, just drag and drop the script in your cameras. Okay, supports. Blah, 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 blah. It looks like it's the same deal, so I just choose my camera and add. Let me just save this. Should be fine. Add Mad Goat. Okay, oh, SRP is currently in beta and will stay so until Unity SRP system releases a stable version. Please read the notes below first. Okay, he's trying to enable this if the image gets flipped. Okay. Okay, I need to read something. That sucks. I hate reading. Um, this is the visual blah blah blah. Unity process start view to da 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 da. Installation. Unity. No. Oh, requirements post processing stack v2 package installed I guess that's what I've got when using HDR the image sometimes gets flipped upside down so you can choose that okay I think that's what it's talking about so let's change this to 4x uh, that's in case uh, let's just tell me to check these out okay it's in this viewport but it's not working unless I need to disable certain things now. Uh, okay, back to reading. Um, this is the official mad go. The purpose is all to have stable release when okay. Newer versions result in less so I'm I'm basically really up to date with Unity. I think I'm like a fraction behind, but it's fine. Some patience when it comes to trouble settings and make sure all the requirements are met. Important from asset from Unity Assets to you normally would. Add Unity's post processing stack v2 to the project defines and player settings. If it's not ready, they are normally in the post processing package automatically adds it upon installing. Cross platform. Okay. Inside Mac will import the SRA shaders package. Okay, that's what I need to do. Saw something. Oh, oh, doing something. Okay. And then, oh yeah, we've got something. Okay, so I know with Mad Goat you have to run the game, so I'm gonna choose my camera, go to a view and do Control Shift F to move the camera to that view. And then I'm gonna maximize on play and run and see if I get 
any result. No, what? Nothing. Nothing. It's here. But when you play, it's not here. And toggling doesn't do anything. You have to run and play one. So I hate to have enable this. If it's getting flipped, maybe it is. Play. Guess we might have to be patient with this one. I do like Mad Goat AA's um, result. There seems to be some errors showing up in the console here. Oh no, it's, it's done something. I just don't see any change. So it's in play mode. Let's see if there's anything I need to switch on and switch off. I know I've missed something, I've probably just overlooked a couple of things. Let's look back on that. Add Unity Post Processing Stack V2 to the project defines in player settings. Settings again. Um, Unity post one start with to the project defines and player settings. Project defines what? I've never actually been here for anything. Project defines there it is there. Okay, so it's already it's already in. Okay. So I guess just need to be patient then. Um, maybe the post process volumes aren't liked with this might be conflicting yeah I'm I'm running it and I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any result that I've seen before in this I can see it flashing as if it's doing something but I just don't see the nice effect that should be seen. Enable this if the image is flipped. Okay, the issue is currently investigated. Okay, it's possible. Ba, ba, ba. Stay. SRP support is currently in beta and will stay so until Unity SRP releases a stable version. Please read the notes below first. After flight, my good can be used as usual. Let me try, because I did things in kind of the wrong order. Let's try and install this now. Oops. I'll click something. Right. Okay, it's already done. Maybe turn it off and on again. the project
and this is pretty recent I'm sure and there's like you just toggle it you toggle the the view oh yeah we go and the HD render pipeline have got their instabilities at the minute and one's chasing the other uh, every time Unity does an update it might be a case of on the script uh, the shader graph right anyway so I'm going to just take that off because not everyone's got Mad go and run the game. Okay, it's running. Just gonna fast approximate. That's quite nice as well. Fast mode. Keep alpha. features all right that's cool so fast approximate looks good okay it's still it as is so there you go fast approximate looks pretty good if I roll Rotate the object, um, rotate the sky cube, sky map. I will have to do for now, I will have to do. this pack also the human shader pack which has got here shader 2 I'm going to add the HD render pipeline and set up files that I've created until everything's fully functioning let's just delete that directional light um, Yeah, get in touch if you've bought the, the product. Then get in touch by email. It's usually good. Um, don't don't expect a quick. Answer if you use the review by email. It's, it means I can give you a more bespoke answer.